Would you like to be a big part of the greatest challenge, the greatest cause, and the greatest work on earth today? Would you like to help gather Israel during these precious latter days? When we speak of gathering Israel on both sides of the veil, we are referring, of course, to missionary, temple, and family history work. We are also referring to building faith and testimony in the hearts of those with whom we live, work, and serve. Anytime we do anything that helps anyone on either side of the veil to make and keep their covenants with God, we are helping to gather Israel. Welcome. I'm very happy that we're we are here now today. Um, I'm really excited for Brother Land and Sister Corden um, and that we can you know, talk to each other a little bit. And I'm really excited to hear about your challenges. Yeah, so I made uh, a family recipe of a ginger cake, but um, to add a, an element of challenge to this one. Um, I've recently just got married. I've been married for just about five months now. And my husband's grandmother makes a ginger cake as well. And so I thought, wow, what a challenge to make a ginger cake from my grandma and his grandma and to compare them. So I made each recipe and it's quite interesting because in, in the war times in England, um, there were rationings, right? So some ingredients weren't available. So one, one cake recipe of this ginger cake is very simple and it's sort of like a wartime cake. Uh, whereas the other one has got rich ingredients and there's about three times the amount of ingredients in one. So I made each ginger cake and then sent them to my parents and then sent them to my husband's parents for them to figure out which one was which recipe. Um, and it was just really fun to have something to celebrate both our families um, and to connect to our kind of our grandparents but also um, a challenge for the future is something that I want to do is combine the two recipes somehow make take the best of both and create our own ginger cake recipe but Lydia didn't you make a recipe from your grandma too? I did I made my great great grandma's uh, caramel popcorn recipe and um, I got to learn a story about her. So that was really fun. We, um, we called her Candy Grandma because she had, she sold her chocolates and her treats to support her boys. Was it a good recipe? Did you like the recipe? It was. I didn't burn the house down, so that was good. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I made a salad with a little more flour and eggs also known as a cake and it was it was good it was so um it was my great aunt's recipe and she's actually still alive but um she's not married so she doesn't have any kids which I think it's pretty special that we get to you know make her recipes and I think that makes her feel pretty special as well because um that's one way we're definitely gonna remember her and our children and then their children and yeah it's it's so funny how when like when you're cooking, when you're doing all these things, all these challenges, you're you're thinking about them, and it's it's pretty neat to just um, have that connection, even though you're not talking to them, you're not with them, you're still thinking about them, and I think that was a pretty neat experience. Yeah. So talk about cooking. I also made uh, sweet and sour spare ribs. The recipe by was by my grandma. She's still here, but I mean, we all love food, so we all want to pass down our, our our family food through the family so future generations can also uh, enjoy it. So when you made it, did you think of your grandma? Yeah, of course. Uh, right now she's in Hong Kong. I'm mm -hmm. in Canada right now. So yeah, haven't seen her in a while. So yeah, makes me think of family. So I a I little, little fun, very fast um, salad with just peppers and cheese. But it was the one my uh, great grandma used to make all the time when there was just no time or just, yeah, yeah, just wanted a salad. And now we're eating as, as a family. And I just, I, I, it was so fun because as I was remembering her and um, remembering that she was cooking me a lot of food 
before she died, and now um, I get to cook her food or yeah, prepare her her food. It was really fun. So I look through um, just different old family recipes and look through some family history um, documents to see if I could find anything fun about food. And Naomi Larson um, had made a apple pan dowdy. And I thought, what on earth is that? And so as I looked at this old recipe, actually the way that she even made it, I wasn't even sure the instructions because they wrote it in a way that it's not how we cook now. But I sliced the apples and and uh, as I was putting all the ingredients together, the thing that I thought was so amazing is my mind reflected on her. Even though I don't know much about her, I thought, how did she make this? You know, I had an apple peeler and it was easy for me to take measuring cups and, and go to the supermarket and just buy everything. Um, and I thought, I wonder what her process was. But I was amazed at how through this challenge, I felt so connected to Naomi Larson as I made this apple pan dowdy. Amanda, did you make anything food-wise? I think I was the only person who didn't cook. I didn't do any cooking, but I did other things which were equally fun. So I took up the graveyard adventure and I also visited my hometown. So then those were very, very nice because I got to see family members and also hear certain stories. I also did the graveyard adventure. So uh, my uncle passed when I was a couple years old. I was very young. And so I went to his cemetery. So I kind of wiped down his his grave. It was very dusty. And it was very cold that day. So my hands were freezing. But it was worth it. Brother Lun, did you cook anything? The house looks no, like... No, no, I was, I was with Amanda. I didn't, dare, uh, I didn't dare light anything on fire in the kitchen. But I, I did have a very sweet experience. Uh, about two weeks ago was my mother's 89th birthday. And she lives uh, a distance from here. She lives in Arizona. So, you know, a thousand kilometers away. And I wasn't able to go be with her on her birthday because of the COVID situation. And so I thought because of this little assignment that I would write her a letter. And the letter I wrote her, actually it was an extended text because we mostly communicate by text or by phone these days. Uh, I, I wrote her a letter about my memories, my very first memories of her living in our very first house in Santa Rosa, California. And as I was uh, recapturing all of the little fleeting, you know, my very first memories of my mother in this uh, very first place uh, that, that we lived, it was really a, a very enriching experience for me to kind of go back to that place. So after sending the letter, uh, she and I talked by phone and she reminded me of some other things that she remembered the lady next door and the you know, things we remembered about her and so forth. And so I, it was surprising to me how, uh, you know, how that sort of bonded, bond, bound us together. And, and my mom and I are very close, but, you know, this was a very special thing to take time to do. And so now I've expanded my little personal biography of my very first memories in my very first house with hers to create a little bit more complete of a story. Um, Brother Lund, how are you going to record those stories? Well, they're in our text strand. That's pretty good, but pretty recorded. But yeah, I know that there is the facility to uh, upload those into the family search thing. I haven't done that yet because I need to do some more editing. We're, we're still having these ongoing conversations. So I've got a few things to add yet. If we can download it and put it in family search, I think there's a real ability to connect other people and gather more people as they start realizing that they're part of our family tree. I think it's cool because it's not just like benefiting yourself, you know, you're like serving others by putting that information on there so that your future like ancestors and stuff can see it. Yeah, they'll all know Josh. See, that would be so cool. You know, not very long ago, if somebody had a little family artifact or treasure or story, it just stayed in their little strand of the family and the whole rest of the extended family was, would be pretty much unaware of those things. And I, I just find it such a remarkable thing that, that stories and, and documents and photos of, of people and so forth now become available to everybody within a, within a genealogy, you know, I guess everybody, but 
you know, that is such a special thing. Um, you know, we've discovered by browsing through what people have been contributing, um, you know, rich little pieces of our family history in the form of military records and you know, school records and so forth that would, would never be known by any of us. And so our, our family heritage has been so enriched through these technologies. Well, Josh, didn't you do something with your great grandpa? I learned a guitar song that he liked to play to his kids, like my mom's side of the family, you know, when they were little, little. Yeah. And I thought it was just pretty cool to learn. Right. You took your time and got to know something your grandpa used to play. So it's cool. You might notice that I've got a guitar parked right behind me over here. I won't be playing it today. <laughs> I'm rescuer than you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's just there to remind me that I need to relearn how to play the guitar. Two things I actually did relate it to music. I'll, I'll share actually one of them that it was kind of a failure of a, of a challenge, but I think, you know, I'm, we're trying to be candid. So I'll, I'll tell you guys the story. Um, my great grandpa was kind of like a local celebrity in his hometown. And um, he was actually a cab driver and people would like, request his specific taxi so he would sing to them because back in the day I don't know if the cars didn't have radios or this was back in 1930s so anyways um, he started his own radio channel and um, you know we don't really have any recordings or anything with his voice so I spent a few hours calling radio stations trying to recover that and sadly the only radio station that could have had it said that um, they lost their hard drive from those years so pretty sad, but, you know, it was still pretty cool that I got to think about him the entire time. I never met him, but I feel like when I was hearing all these stories about him and contacting the radio station, some people knew them, some people didn't. It was still pretty cool to, like, you know, hear about him and, and get to know him indirectly. It was a, a pretty neat experience. Where was your grandpa from, though? Uh, they were from uh, Chihuahua, Mexico. So northern Mexico, yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a celebrity in Mexico. Yeah. So the other the other story, uh, the other challenge challenge I did was um, write a, a lullaby for my little niece. She's the first niece in the family, and you know I thought maybe I will do something and I'll record it so we actually keep it for, you know, for our kids and and their kids. All right. Well, when that's re when that's ready to be downloaded, let us know so we can all get a download. For <laughs> sure, just don't uh, listen to it when you're driving because you might fall asleep. <laughs> Fair enough. I've got a quick question. Did anyone have any challenges that actually like failed a little bit? Or am I the only one? <laughs> Has anyone got anything that was hard? Yes, I did. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys remember this, but one of my projects that I initially chose was I was going to do one of the no place like home challenges. And I was going to do a cleanup project to beautify and serve my hometown. And then <laughs> it pulled a Canada on us and it ended up snowing and being minus 30 degrees Celsius. So instead me and my friend actually bundled up really warm and we went and took some pictures of our favorite places in our hometown and places that had good memories for us so it was in a way it was kind of a failure but then it turned into a success <laughs> i had i had a failure so, sort of or maybe it's just not ready yet but um i sent a picture to one of my older friends and she hasn't responded yet so yeah, it's a bit sad. I thought it might be a very easy task to do or a really easy challenge to do, but sadly I didn't get a response yet. But trying to find the picture or trying to um, yeah, show her what memories I have from her, I, I had a very good time. And I hope she'll see it someday, but we'll see. It's okay. <laughs> I was going to say, life is long. You be patient and you'll see that that will come back to you. Yeah, we'll see. So I also had something similar when I visited my grandpa and I was hoping to hear very inspiring stories about him. So then we went and then I, um, we called some of my aunties and we just told them, oh, we are visiting grandpa's graveside. Would you like to come along? And as soon as they heard that, they, they came, but not everyone was able to come because of the short notice. 
So on our way, I tried asking them about my grandpa, hoping to hear some inspiring stories, something nice. And then they just kept going on about how he used to play pranks on them and things like that. And I was like, this wasn't what I wanted to hear, but um, it's all about perspective. Um, they telling me those things showed how close he really was to them in spite of his responsibilities. Um, seeing the way they were able to recall memories of him and laugh about him, even though he wasn't there with them. So that was very nice, seeing how sweet he was. Did he tell you about any of the pranks that he did? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to tease them a lot, but then he was a very devoted father. So um, he had nine children and he made sure they all stayed with him, even after he, um, my grandparents separated. And he was so devoted to them and he would eat their food no matter how bad it was. So, yeah. <laughs> And he would still oh, come. Um, but I think one of the pranks um, they told me about was um, they went somewhere and my uncle decided to climb a tree. But um, he climbed it out of excitement. And then when he got up there, he now had to realize that the tree was too high for him to jump down. So my grandpa was like, come down. And he was like, no, he's going to stay there because he's scared of heights. And my grandpa was like, if you don't come down, there are wild animals here. They are going to eat you up. And he pretended he was leaving and my my uncle was able to jump down. So yeah, that's how he was. <laughs> so I wanted to uh, do one of the art challenges. Um, I really appreciate art and um, I've come from a home that appreciates art. And I think um, I wanted to do something that kind of symbolizes family history, searching for, for connection within family. Um, and so I, I tried to do this uh, sort of like a tree print of, uh, but in like a unique way. It's like, oh, the family tree is quite a, a symbolic, beautiful art piece. But what about doing like the slice of a tree and the rings of the tree, how they spread out and how perhaps, you know, a family starts in the, in the middle uh, with, I don't know, Adam and Eve, or it starts with you. You could start from the middle and how each ring can represent a new generation or a new family, or you're the outside ring. And, and the further you deep, uh, further, the deeper you get into uh, your family history, the, the deeper you can get or things like that. So I thought it was quite a beautiful symbol, uh, but actually the practicality of trying to do a tree print is harder than I thought. And it sounds really simple, uh, but it took a little while and I had quite a few failed prints, but I only got one good print out of all of them and I can show it to you if you like. Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. Okay, i put it on the side. <laughs> So this is the one. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see the print? Oh, oh my no. goodness. If that's what you call a fail. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. That's the only print that came out good. Uh, but I fun. love how you can see like the fibers of the rings as they go out. Sure. Starts small and goes out. And um, just thought it was a like a nice symbol of um, of, of family history. But a really great produce of that kind of fail. I guess it was a fail in the end, but um, I was showing someone at work, a colleague that I work with, I was telling her, I tried making this kind of piece of art, didn't really go very well. Um, but then she asked me about family history and she was like, oh, I've, I've always wanted to know more about my, uh, my ancestors. And so I showed her my family tree on my app on my phone and she said, oh, sign me up, let, let's do this. And we were on a night shift at work together. So we had a, a couple of hours just kind of quite quiet. We'd done everything. Um, and so we just sat on the computer and we got back to about five generations of her family tree um, just through simple searching. And she had quite a lot of um, documents and evidence to show. Um, and after we'd done that, she sent me a text and she got home and said, I've, I've still done it, but um, I've, still, I've still searched back for, for more of my family history. Um, but I, I, I hope you realise that I don't, I don't want to talk to my parents. She has a very destructive relationship with her parents and doesn't want to speak to them ever again, but she, for, for quite a few different reasons, but she was still searching for that kind of identity and that um, connection to her ancestors beyond um, those kind of broken relationships that she's felt. Um, and it was just amazing that just doing a piece of art of something can inspire them a conversation that can help someone find a deeper connection 
from perhaps failed family relationships um, and also the, I suppose, a bit of missionary work hidden beneath to help someone uncover their identity is such a huge, I don't know, it's such a huge thing that we don't often, that we, we can so often overlook. You know, I, I was impressed, Felicity, how normal and, normal and natural you just shared what you loved about your family and how to help her figure out how to find her family. I just think that's amazing how just that little piece of art um, opened up so many doors for her and a sense of belonging for her in a period that she's feeling broken from maybe that current connection of her parents. I suppose I think perhaps we had talked about this, but it was interesting reflecting on the, the challenges that we've all chosen to do. So most of them are food or, or music or art or just conversations with our family, but those seem like very small, simple, natural things to do. Things we do on the daily almost, right? Yeah. Um, but why is it that it's actually the small, simple things that can create so much connection, you know? And maybe that's just a question to throw out there. Why, why is it that the small things bring the greatest and deepest connection of all? You know, I think part of what was happening there with your friend is that you were awakening and awakening in her that spirit of Elijah, you know, which is the the Holy Ghost, uh, enlivening her under or her recognition that she's not alone and that there's, you know, her posterity has really contributed to who she is, notwithstanding the challenges that exist. We've all got some crazy in our families. Well, you know, it makes me think of when you said the small and simple things, I was uh, pondering the youth theme this year. And I think there says a lot about it. It says, um, wherefore, be not weary in well-doing. And I think this says, a, it says, for ye are laying a foundation of a great work. And out of small things proceedeth that which is great. And it is the small things that proceed great things. Um, but I, I think it's amazing that we are laying a foundation. That opportunity to gather and to link family members together and to help our friends help their family and have that sense of belonging. Um, so I love that we are laying a foundation and that we may have that energy to not be weary in uh, well doing this great work. So what I've learned from this activity is that family history work is not only for your deceased ancestors, it's also for your living family members and your future generation. So it's good to like record everyone's words or something from your living family and save it so you don't miss the chance to do so. One of my friends is a really active genealogist and she teaches that that uh, we should learn the lesson of going back to our ancestors and trying to scrape together just some detail of their lives. And it's so rare when you go back a few generations to find any real color. And she, she, says, she says, make sure that your descendants don't have the same problem with you. You know, write these stories, leave artifacts behind, leave, you know, uh, references to your life and of your faith and of your journey so that they can be strengthened by it. I think Mara and I, you did want to write a, a, a letter to yourself, right? I did, and I actually haven't gotten to it because um, I was too focused on the lullaby, but it is still something I want to do. Um, I actually did something similar last year, um, and it, it was just really nice to read it with the whole pandemic thing uh, happening. I wrote it before the pandemic happened. And it, it was nice to read it and go back and see like, oh, this was me before the pandemic. Like, you know, even there's more, I don't know, isolation. And, you know, we have to be a lot more careful. And maybe there's a lot more fear in our society. When I read it, um, I was like, there's no need to like, I can be just the same person I was a year ago. So yeah, I will get to it. And I'll write one for this year. And hopefully next year, when I read it, we're out of the pandemic, and we can just, you know, look back and, and and, and see how it was being during the pandemic, so. I actually did that challenge um, and I thought it was cool because like there's so many different connections that I made with all these different challenges, like with my ancestors and with my living family members, with friends and then even with myself. 
right? And it was cool to kind of look back on myself and how I want my future self um, and kind of it aligned with the children and youth goals a little bit too. And it was an interesting perspective to kind of connect with myself as well. So Amanda, I remember, I remember you talking about your, your grandpa is kind of a celebrity, right? Do you want to talk about it? I wouldn't say he was a celebrity. He was just a king. <laughs> yeah, he was a king. Yeah. Just the king. Just the king. <laughs> just the king. <laughs> Yeah. King of the clan. Yeah, yeah, he was the king of the clan. And he was very devoted to, but his family always came first. And I think that's one thing my aunties and uncles have inherited from him because um, they are very close. And yeah. Is that something you found out about him that maybe a personality trait that you have from him? Yeah, he always pushed for peace no matter what. So my grandpa always um, celebrated people's differences. I remember there was a time where my mom asked me to go and buy candles. And when I got to the place, um, I didn't, um, it was, we, I had to get the candles because the lights were out. And then when I got to the shop, the lights came back on. So I was like, okay, I'm not getting candles. And I came back home. And my mom was like, why didn't you get the candles? And I was like, it's because the need for the candles, we don't need the candles anymore. And my mom was like, no, you should have gotten the candles. And my grandpa was like, no, she's actually very smart. She didn't need the candles anymore. So yeah, I just like how he descended to my level and he always tried <clears throat> to understand me. So I think I get that from him. One of my challenges I took on was reading the diary my great, great, um, grandpa had written when in the war and and I read it I, I'm really excited that I could read a little bit of it um, it's it's written the original is written in an older um, lettering style and uh, my grandpa translated it into or not translated but wrote it down and um, typed it and so we could read it and it's it's been really fun because in his introduction word, he said that even though we might not feel the same about war, what he was excited about, my great great grandpa, um, we might find something that we have in common with him. And I think it's so beautiful because just uh, getting to know your ancestors better without ever meeting them, maybe. Um, and finding out similarities uh, is such a special thing. Like I found, I found out that he was very passionate um, in his case about the war and he loved being there. But in my case, it might be something else. And I'm, I would say, or I would consider my th myself as a very passionate person too. So right in the beginning, I, yeah, realized that I have, something very in common with my great great grandpa. <laughs> so if you had 30 seconds to tell someone what your thoughts are from these challenges about family history, what would you share? What have you learned? Mm, I guess what I would say is family history work is not just like boring stuff. We not just like inserting names. There's so much more we can do and it's so much more fun. I think I would say family history is contagious. And it, I think it's part of that power that comes with, uh, you know, the spirit of Elijah and all those, um, the the motivation to want to do things. And, and yeah, kind of what Caleb was saying, it's that contagious, fun thing that you want to keep doing. And it makes you think of your ancestors and your uh, future uh, descendants. And it's just, you, you can't stop. Honestly, once you started, just like, what else can I do? What else can I do? And then you start coming with super cool projects. So. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> it's kind of fun to be able to share with everybody and connect in so many different ways that you didn't expect. Yeah, it might seem overwhelming at first, seeing maybe the challenges. Oh, no, I got to do something. But it was just, I realized I want to, I want to leave memories of myself. I want to help people in their lives in the future 
to learn, gain experience and leave a footprint for myself. Um, and I think that's just an easy way and learning easy ways to do that. And um, yeah, just inspiring others by maybe doing those little things. And I would also say that the reward is in the experiences. Um, as you are doing the experiences, that's when you feel you want to do more. And that is actually the reward. Um, the connection you gain, you get with your family, getting to know them, having that feeling of excitement, knowing that, oh, I get this attribute from this person. I am like this because of this person. It's all worth it. And it makes you want to do more. And that's why I think it's contagious. The more you do it, the more you want to keep doing it. Um, something that I've learned during these challenges and maybe some of the other challenges I'd like to try and do over the next few weeks would be um, how the past really connects you to the present um, and the past connects you to the future. Um, I think I've definitely reflected on perhaps how we often feel so disconnected to the past um, but the power of creation and creativity is taking two things to become something new, something that exists in the present, um, which is why it's quite nice that we've done food challenges. You know, you're, you're bringing that recipe from the past and you're creating it now in the present, even though it was in the past. It's, it's now something new and it's something recreated. And I think we're all recreations of perhaps who our ancestors were, but we're constantly evolving. Yeah. I think at school with family history, if you go out and like do the things that your like ancestors have done, it kind of gives you like a new way to look at certain activities, you know? Like you could think something is uh, fun or something is boring and it could give you a new perspective on it. Like you experience it how they did. One of the outcomes also from family history that I've just noticed is we can share with people. We always have something to share. As you're doing these challenges, it gives a unique perspective that you can share as you're talking to friends about an art piece or talking to um, someone, say, I wrote a lullaby, you know, and open up your um, journal of pictures, um, talking about the graveyard. I mean, I just think it's amazing how it gives us so much to talk to others about in a normal, natural way of, of sharing the gospel and also gathering them so that they can gather their family. I just think that's amazing, just the, the simplicity of all of it. I've been inspired by my ancestors as, as I think everybody would be if they knew their true family history stories. We all have heroic characters in our past. If, if we and some shady them. ones. What's that? And some shady ones. Yes, and especially some shady ones. <laughs> but, but there were, you know, we, history brings with it its privations. And, and throughout time, you know, there have been hungry families that mothers and fathers have gone out and sacrificed for. You know, I've, I've learned of an ancestor, my great-great-grandfather, uh, was imprisoned in Norway. He was in the military, joined the church, and they put him in jail for it. And he and his wife uh, were released on terms that they get on a ship and leave the country and never came back, come back. And so they ended up uh, coming to America, you know, out of a religious persecution thing. And, uh, you know, I have ancestors that crossed with hand carts. And, and I think about my little simple challenges, you know, that bring me to my knees sometimes. But, you know, knowing that I descend from heroic characters, as we all do, uh, we all do, it, it uh, may, maybe inspires me to try to be a little bit less of a wimp and a little bit more of a grown up about uh, the challenges of the day. In a way, I feel like we're our own little recipes, right? And when you go into family search and all these platforms to learn about your ancestors, kind of what um, Felicity was saying, you really learn where you're getting all these uh, attributes from, whether it be a talent or, or personality or any sort of attribute, like it's, it's pretty fun. And I think that's something, that's what I enjoy the most. Um, just going back and saying like, okay, well, I know I have a little bit of sugar and a little bit of, you know, eggs from, from this family, but what really, like, what makes my recipe so unique? And I think that's so cool because it gives you, it really gives you a new sense of identity and you, you learn from all the heroes and also from all the not so heroes in your family. And it's, it's still awesome. It's, it's amazing.
Well, we all have, have stories, you know, and I, it's interesting. My, my husband was adopted and he never knew his, his um, birth parents. And um, right before we were to go on our mission, he had a, a real urge to look online. And in 20 minutes, it's amazing how the Lord opens up windows in 20 minutes. He all of a sudden had people saying, you know, I think he had given, he had put some information in the, um, through the internet. And in the, in a 20 minute period of time, all of a sudden he had all these people saying, you know, I think this is your birth mom. And here's all the numbers that might be hers over a period of 10 years. So she, he just called the one on the very top of the list. And as he called a lady answered, and then he thought, who, now what do I say? So he said, did you have a baby boy on this date? And silence on the phone. And all of a sudden, she, you could tell she was scurrying to get out of the room she was in. And he, she said, I thought that maybe I would get a call like this someday. And the interesting thing, he found his birth mother who, who didn't want to have any connection, which was, so, which was fine. But she gave him the name of the birth father who didn't know that he even had fathered a child. And he, once he found out, he wanted the connection. So to this day, he knows who his birth father is and they have a very sweet connection, even though the mother decided that she didn't want any connection. So I just, I looked from both of those experiences that he's had, what an ad- opportunity to be open to other people. And because of this birth father being open, they have a sweet friendship. So um, family history is messy. It doesn't always follow a simple pattern, or, but uh, so now he's doing family history for his birth families and as he's scrapping information together. So I think it's amazing how we just all come from so many different walks of life and different characters in our, in our lives. I'm actually adopted too. Um, it's kind of cool since I don't, I didn't, I don't really know my birth parents that, that much. So it's kind of cool to find out more about them. And same goes for everyone else in my family that's, you know, passed away. And I think it's just nice to learn about them because you know that you have a connection and it's just hard when, I don't know how to explain it, when you can't actually be there to like interview them and stuff, but yeah, I think it's really cool and important. I really like Felicity said about um, us feeling a disconnection to the past because when taking up the hometown adventure, I ended up visiting my grandmom and my grandmom barely remembers our names and our faces. But um, as soon as we entered, she had just woken up and she was so excited. She started dancing and singing. And at that moment, I I was happy to see her that excited, even though she didn't really remember my name. And she calls us by a lot of names before she settles on our names. And so um, I was really excited to see her that excited. And it, it brought my mind to something. Um, sometimes we may feel, oh, our older ancestors have done most of the family history work and that there isn't much we can do. But then the more we do it, the more we develop, um, we develop a fondness for, for the people we came from, because then we develop a connection with them. We read about them. And um, like Moroni said, you see that you get a little bit of sugar from them. But then also, um, they, are, they would always love us knowing that we are their descendants, even if, they, even if we do not know them personally. They would always love us, like my grandmom did. She didn't really remember my name, but knowing that I was her granddaughter, she was so happy she started dancing. It's the same thing. The more you do it, the more you develop a connection with them. Do you inherit your dancing skills from her, Amanda? I don't think I can dance, but... <laughs> yeah but she's a great dancer <laughs> well I just want to ask how why is finding connection important for you and how has family history and and searching how has that enriched this connection um just would like to hear your thoughts on that 
you know, I have very early memories of my father uh, engaging and my mother engaging in, uh, in, in family history work and making these discoveries out of Norway and Sweden and Denmark where our family had come from and learning names that we would talk about. And it, uh, it really has changed my life in a very dramatic way to be aware of, of who I am and what, and what was there. So, you know, family history is, is uh, encouraged upon us because of the blessing that it can be and that the Lord intends it to be in our lives. Me, especially during the pandemic, um, I've realized how important it is to connect with people and how sharing these kind of things can help you to stay on the covenant path and to, you know, be doing what is right and keeping commandments, staying faithful. And it's just a really good way to keep each other strong. So that's what I like about these challenges. Um, I really like the challenges because they help me see the bigger picture. Like I said, um, like the experience I shared about my grandmom, um, it, in that moment, you see, most of the time we, we are told that there are people cheering for us behind the veil and that they really care for us. But in that moment, I actually felt it because knowing her condition, that she couldn't remember me, that um, I... I, I barely stayed with her. She was that excited to see me. It, um, it helped me to really see that indeed there are people cheering for me behind the veil, even though I haven't physically met them. But then we are bonded together because we are family. To me, it's because, I mean, they're our family, right? Who doesn't want to know our families? And families are forever. So after like we die, we'll meet them again. So it's good to know more about them. I think it's just not to be alone, connecting to make others happy, to make us happy is a big part of it. So doing these challenges made me realize that connecting and making also new friends with, yeah, just talking with you um, is just, yeah, something we need in life, something, yeah, to yeah, get to know someone and make life fun i think that's important we all want to belong we all want a sense of someone um, noticing or being aware of us and i think it's amazing as we do our uh, family history and we jump into challenges and we investigate we realize that we are loved not only by our family but we're loved by our heavenly father and he gave such an incredible plan of happiness for us. Um, for me, family history increases my understanding of who I am as a beloved daughter of, of heavenly parents. And I think it helps all of us realize that we have a purpose on this earth, that we're not just here to just waste away our time. And so I think that is such a helpful thing in for family history, no matter what our family looks like. The big family is that um, we are all beloved sons and daughters of God, and that our purpose here is to return. And, but we don't want to do it alone. And that's what I love about the gathering. We get together. We get together our loved ones. We get together our friends. Um, we get together all our hobbies and, and interest and then share them. And we get to absorb and learn those of um, our ancestors. So it has been an absolute treat to get to know all of you as our new friends hear of your ancestors, um, but also feel your spirit and love for the Lord and your love and your knowledge of who you are and, and your purpose here on this earth. And I'm grateful you continue to share and lift people by, by being who you are and just what you stand for as a disciple of Christ. Thank you so much for all sharing and, um, and let's continue to gather these these connections and these small, simple daily things. Um, I really love that. It doesn't have to be challenging, but I guess it's called a challenge because um, it's something we haven't done yet, right? Um, but um, thank you so much, uh, Sister Corden and uh, Brother Lund. Um, I'm not sure how we're gonna finish this. 
uh, I think we just give the thumbs up. But uh, <laughs> my dear young brothers and sisters, these surely are the latter days, and the Lord is hastening His work to gather Israel. That gathering is the most important thing taking place on earth today. Nothing else compares in magnitude. Nothing else compares in importance. Nothing else compares in majesty. If I had the wish of my heart, every boy, every girl will have learned something from this experience that will make you a more devoted disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, when I use the term every man and every woman and every boy and every girl, I have a particular emphasis on the young adults and the youth of the church. You are leaders. You can take the lead in the gathering of Israel on both sides of the veil. You have been uh, brought to the earth for such a time as this. So don't just think, well, these are nice activities. You have a role to play in helping many of the adults who are afraid of technology and which you have never known a world without. In addition to that, you are not constrained by some of the traditions of the past. You'll think about this in new ways. So seek for the inspiration, seek for help from heaven, and you rise up and you take a leadership role just in the competence that you have with these, these new tools. You will influence the lives of more people than you can ever imagine just through your simple example. You saw that demonstrated in this panel discussion today. So that's you. Don't look at those people in that panel and say, oh, that was great. They're good leaders. That's you. You become those leaders. You don't have to be invited to be on a panel in a presentation like this. Do what you naturally do and help lead in this important effort. Would you please consider these questions? What have I learned? And what will I do? with the things that I have learned. I promise inspiration will attend you as you reflect, as you kind of review some of the notes that you may have taken. What stands out to you and what have you learned? But even more importantly, this is not simply to have additional knowledge in your mind. This is to be reflected in your faith as a principle of action. What will you now go and do? that will bless and benefit many other people on both sides of the veil. Again, my invitation is, what have you learned and what will you do with what you have learned? I want to express my love for you. I love you. I'm grateful for this opportunity to participate with you. And I pray that all of us will be enriched through this experience and that it will be reflected in what we now go and do as the Lord's servants. As an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, I joyfully declare that he lives. I know that he is our savior and our redeemer, and he is risen, and he lives. This is the living church of Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is alive. In this church, we have his authority, we have his doctrine, we have his saving ordinances and principles. And it is the greatest joy that any of us can ever experience to help others find the, the purpose and the enduring joy that comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ. I bear witness of him, of him as the truth, and invoke the blessing upon you that you will have an increase in joy as you continue to participate in this holy work. I declare this witness and I invoke this blessing upon you in the sacred name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.